Hey up. Right, good morning. Um, you might notice as I'm somewhere very pretty. Um, and that's because we've come we've come out camping in Flandrover in Finn. And um and I just want to do a bit, I'm just going to spin around this way so so you can well why is this not I want to track me at all? So you can see behind me here we've got forest uh and dog <laughs> and then this way we've got uh mountains we'll see look oh, there's grand isn't it look very pretty anyway uh i've just got i'm only going to turn the camera around very briefly because uh i say very briefly i'm going in very short while i'm going to turn the camera around i'm going to show you how we pack car up because uh one of the videos that's been quite popular on the youtube account um is <laughs> is how to camp in the bag of a land row and i'm going to show you right here you are, look so what we've done is we've got uh we've, we've got two ways of doing this but this particular time we've got a double mattress a double air mattress uh and two slimpy blankets obviously and then dog's bed this blanket here at bottom's dog's bed um and what we've done is we've sort of crammed it in and we blow it up from that end because you charges there but it's easier to get at with the, the battery thing and what have you um so we just fold seats down and uh Hold them forwards like that, and then we just you end up with a bit of a raise on it just at pillar there, but it works out quite well, really. Now we fit in both Terry and I. I'm I'm six foot. Now my seat's slightly far six. I'm just under six foot. My seat's slightly further forward. I've just tilted it and tilted it backwards, if you see what I mean. Um, and the same with Taryn's. Taryn's a little bit further forward than mine. Uh, but we sort of fit in straight away. I've, I've got these coat hooks uh, that I put in to, to, to hang coats and what have you. Um, and, uh, and basically that's as simple as it is really. You have quite a bit of storage under here for various bits and bobs. I've got to throw that away. We opened a new box up last night, but um, got to throw it away this morning. Normally I'd put the water under there, but water is on top here. Look, we left that out last night. And then you can see drone batteries and other things. Well, dog's food's under there, and, and there's a number of other bits and bobs. And, and under this seat here where you squash this down, we've got a, a number of bits of things that we keep under there. Uh, and then we just let the thing down in the morning. Uh, we'll pull that blanket, the, pull the mattress down, and then... Here you see we've got the same deal, the bags go in the front, you can see that this is my bag and that's Taryn's bag, so there's plenty of space, candy of course because you need sweets don't you, um, and then here just in the middle, of, just in case we needed it in the middle of the night is the emergency sort of blanket and then we've got uh, front window blocked off with one of those things to stop light coming in, uh, we did have, I've had to take it down now because it, it was night, it was, <laughs> get out um, but we also had uh, blankets from the, the we had two blankets one on either side that we put on side windows here and we just trap them in at front here just in in the door and because the, the the seals are very good on this if you just nudge it in sort of just up here uh, the door holds it closed but it doesn't get wet if you see what I mean uh, and then that's it, and then it's quite dark and, and you can get some sleep and it's, it's actually, we I didn't sleep, I'm wide awake because I work nights as you know, so I was wide awake this morning when everybody went to, when Taryn and I was trying to sleep, we went at four o'clock, I was wide awake, so I didn't sleep until, I didn't get to sleep until about six, um, I went to bed at two and, um, and, uh, uh, but we've just woken up now and it's 11 o'clock so, so so there you go um so uh, we're just going to have a bit of a you know look, there's mountains up here look we pulled over to a bit of a rest place uh just to have a uh, you know, the, this is in the middle of nowhere this is the only uh fuel station that there is for oh god miles and miles <laughs> uh probably two hours and uh, there's some more mountains look and there's Jip the Magnificent, aren't you? Are you fluffy? Say hello to everybody, Jip. Mm, very famous, aren't you? You're the internet dog. <laughs> yes, you are. And then 
uh, forest, presumably with burrs in it, and all the other types of uh, animal creatures that live in the forest. So it's a grand night, grand place to pull up and uh, very uh, warm. Uh, it's minus, I think it's about minus six or eight at the moment. Uh, even though it's spring, isn't it? And we've got. Um, I'll just show you one last look in here. Uh, we do hang a few bits of bobs in the windows to get them out of the way. Uh, Taryn's jacket goes here and we've got my jackets there and then we'll pull it all apart and that's that. Right, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, that'll be it for now I think and then we'll crack on and hopefully I'll piece together some pretty scenery that we've, we've got from the trip and, and you'll enjoy seeing, um, I guess more fin really because there's not much more you can show back inside is there really um and so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll close the camera down for now and piece bits together and then that'll be that so some of this video of course is going to be uh audio that i'm dubbing afterwards because i'm piecing bits together as i sort of hinted at earlier on but uh leaving saskatchewan crossing we jingled up sort of somewhat slowly behind these ice field tour buses um which frequent the area and and, and travel a lot slower than they they should be really um you can see the scenery is very epic here this road is closed for about half the year because apparently the snow is too deep to clear but uh, you know looking at it right now it's only been open a little while i'm not entirely sure why that would be the case um because they get a lot of snowpack here but it's not you know it's not something that they couldn't keep clear and it would be very spectacular i imagine uh when the weather was nice and, and snowy uh, but you can see we're heading up here so this is somewhere about seven thousand feet um and um are uh, regularly uh, run by the bus companies to, to travel into this uh, glacier and you can drive right up there uh, to the top and, and uh, as you can see as I'm zooming in now into the, the glacier you can travel onto the glacier with some big fancy buses and, and big wheels uh, actually recently it was in the news because one of, one of the buses rolled over and killed a bunch of people um, so you can go and wander around on that glacier and of course it's uh, one of the most accessible glaciers I suppose you would call it and one of the biggest up in the ice fields. There are many but uh, this particular one, uh, the Columbia ice field, is, is uh, the largest glacier amongst them and there's a big fancy hotel and interpretive centre and lodge and all that kind of stuff there. But also there's some friendly little chaps that you see bobbing up and down the road every now and then and these uh, fellows you, you cross, um, come across quite regularly on the on the highway up and down the area now you can see finn in his natural element here uh, uh parked on some gravel at the side of the road there to get some photo opportunities and it's a very nice place it had just started snowing here to be honest and was very pretty anyway when we left this area we started to proceed down an hill and encountered the issue that i have been remarking on for quite some time see this is third gear right so we've got third gear manual here and we're only got a four percent downgrade here this is it's not a big hill four percent and you can see here that the speed is going up and up and up and up and up uh, not the speed well the speed as well i suppose but also the rev counter because uh, the engine braking isn't if, even in third gear at 4000 rpm it's not enough hold you back on a tiny four percent grade uh, so if you look at that you see here it's a four five percent now i suppose and i'm having used the foot brake to slow it down because it, it's just it's not enough it's not good enough like and there's no trailer on or anything now imagine i've got a loaded trailer behind here and i'm trying to slow it down without using my brakes and burning it up burning brakes up this isn't this is no good it's not sufficient to to slow it itself down let alone out hell's down now if you've got, I don't know, five or six thousand pounds worth of trailer behind here, and this is a long hill, this is a six mile grade, only at four percent here, that's not enough. You'd be hot as hell by the time you got to the bottom on brakes to be warmed up and no wonder you get brake fade and, and you know they have put these large brakes, large brake rotors on, large brake discs or whatever you want to call it. Every time I've got touch brakes here now because it's too much. Uh, no, I'm out of gears because if I drop gear here now, if I put it in second, it'll be up around. Just push that gear stick. Oh. 
now I'm into like second, but I'm right up. Well, I mean, it was slowing down, but also the grade's now at 3%, not 4%. So it is slowing down in second, but it shouldn't be this high. As we left uh, the Icefield Parkway and travelled through Jasper, we uh, were headed out towards Hinton and turned north, uh, or left really, um, or left and north, uh, on the scenic Alaska Highway, which is this here. And this uh, turn is just before Hinton on the Jasper to Edmonton Road. Now, uh, the road is, as you can see, not terribly well paved and uh, the province clearly doesn't value this as a particularly main highway um, and it's like this for probably uh, 250 miles or so uh, this road heads towards Grand Cache and uh, along it was uh, a, a very interesting <laughs> very interesting what Taryn called a power cord extension cord the big orange tube and oddly enough it ran all the way from the junction at 40 um, pretty much to Grand Cash, which is <laughs> many miles. <laughs> I don't know who put that up. Um, Taron took a couple of photographs of it because they sort of laid in ditches and over streams and under roads and all sorts of things. It's right there at the side of the road. Very peculiar sort of scenario. Anyway, the weather deteriorated, as you can see, and uh, later on up here we in, uh, encountered more snow, or sleet really, and um, and then on the way back actually some interesting patchy fog um, or oh, fatchy pog as my dad says back home uh, and so uh, we also encountered some wildlife which was very interesting Now, the point of travelling up for, to Grand Cache was mostly a road trip, of course, to play out with um, with Finn, but uh, Taryn, uh, ever the marvellous, had managed to um, find some interesting things to do while we were up there. And one of the things she found was the uh, Sulphur Mountain Gates, which are quite spectacular and definitely worth the trip. Uh, we had intended to, to also travel around a place called Kakwa, uh, wilderness and it is doable by traveling down some gravel roads not dissimilar to this one um, but uh, in reality it took quite a lot longer to get to it than I had anticipated uh, or that Taryn knew really it was another five hours from here anyway when we landed we parked the car up and were treated to a very short walk just around the corner literally and and uh, to a most remarkable natural view uh, you see these massive stone gates here uh, sort of block this river the smoky river and on the far side you see the sulfur mountain river and that river or this river here has worked its way around massive amounts of land to find a softer easier path to wear away whereas the the heavier and stronger river the, the smoky mountain river smoky water river or whatever it's called pushed its way through and pushed its way through those gates and wore its way out but the gates, as you can see, are uh, massive structures of, of um, sandstone and uh, and sort of really must have blocked this river uh, and were worn away over time. There is uh, Captain Gypster uh, being in command of the whole situation. But you can see from this next photograph just exactly how tall these pillars are and how long it must have taken to wear them away at a steady rate of knots. Anyway, when we left here, we, uh, we encountered another gearbox drama. So here we are, look. It's dropped gears here. Uh, it's dropped gear. We're in eco mode. Only cracking on 110, but it's dropped into... Uh, uh, seventh, and we're only on a one percent hill, and we're still in we're still in seventh. It's not like it's not it dropped out of eighth to pull up here. Well, I don't know why, because it's like it's got all the talk in the world allegedly, um, and it shouldn't need to do. Well, 
probably shouldn't need to drop a gear to pull up at 70 miles an hour up a 1% hill. I mean, we're still in zero here, 0%, and we're still in some. Now it's just dropped, look into eight. It's not, the power distribution's not right, really. I mean, in eco, we should be holding, we should be keeping in gears and, and letting it lug a bit, really, and it's, and it's not. Transmission shift protocol fail aside, we were treated to some more wildlife shortly after that. Many cutenesses. And then after these fluffy little chaps, moose. Did you get photos? I didn't get it. After hitting the dubs in Grand Prairie for some noms, and we were treated to a very spectacular uh, Chinook arch sunset which is a bit unusual for that far north as they don't normally experience chinooks but the colours were fantastic after that it began to rain and get a little bit foggy and I had some patchy pog as me dad used to say back home anyway that fog uh, allowed us to get some very interesting footage of the steady light bar in action you know, the beginning of this video just goes to show you exactly how dark it is uh, in the in the prairies when there's no lights on and the mountains and you can see uh, the signs at the side of the road and the reflectors lighting up but that's with the bright lights on and my uh, steady light bar which you'll see at the fog shortly and you can see just exactly how far you can't see even with the big light you can just about see that the the big light does bounce on the on the highway further up it, it's obviously a lot better vision you know when you sat there but now the fog starts to roll in you can see where the light beam is is uh, lit up uh, by or well the fog is lit up by the light beam and it ends up with this very sort of, sort of strange tractor beam affair but uh, the steady light bar is outstanding in terms of performance and and the um, uh, and even though the, there was some reflected light here, as you can see from the cloud, visibility was far superior with the light bar uh, to with the light bar and with just the standard lights. As you can see, I've knocked it off here, and there's a big difference between uh, lit up and not lit up, and, and, and you are able to see uh, the reflectors uh, shining up and lighting up a lot further off, which gives you some direction, some indication of the direction of the road. Uh, and of course uh, for animals popping out of the ditch the lights on the Defender are somewhat disappointing having come from the L322 with the adaptive headlights they uh, they really did do a better job of lighting the road up than than does the, the Defender lights regardless of their so called adaptive sort of notion we don't have the Matrix lights here in Canada we weren't blessed with that option and so what we have to do is manually uh, well I have to manually adjust it because my high beam assist doesn't seem to toggle on anyway you can see here these uh, reflectors and signs are lighting up far uh, far further away uh, with the big light bar on and that does help you know the direction of the road and what's coming and you can just about see uh, the end uh, of the the main lights uh, right here as I've knocked the bar off um, for the oncoming traffic you can see that that is main beam and that's not the best when when you're wanting some you know long distance vision the l322 lights did provide a much better beam of light and uh, and a far further reaching one and i don't know whether that was anything to do with the adaptive nature of them i can't imagine that it was or whether it was to do with just higher powered lights um it, regardless of of the of the mechanism of better light the l322 did provide better light these next two images show uh, what the uh, light is actually like this is uh, eye beam light with no fog uh, and the steady light bar on and then the next one here is the steady light bar with some fog and you can see uh, there's a gap in the middle of that light and that's where my main beams finish and the steady starts and that really does give you quite a considerable extra uh, length of vision which is very important when spotting animals in ditches like um, well like moose 
And speaking of animals, here's Jip. And we parked up that night on the uh, Icefields Parkway just outside of Jasper. And we're treated to uh, a very nice parking space just under a tree. Look at that, isn't that lovely? Kept, kept it a bit dark and we woke up about 8 o'clock. Very comfortable. Uh, had a grand night's sleep and Jips slept in the front to give him a bit more room. And then when we woke to uh, outstanding scenery in a very quiet little sort of uh, parking spot, camping sort of picnicking sort of site. And uh, this was the view of the river just outside of our car, as you can see. And then I had to take the obligatory Jip photograph on the rocks and trying to keep him out of the water was um, probably the most difficult part of the entire uh, vacation and the scenery there is absolutely outstanding from there of course we drove back up the Icefields Parkway in the direction of Banff and were treated to more lovely scenery from uh, the Rocky Mountains but to a driver like myself the scenery is only half of the enjoyment uh, one of the pleasures about driving the the mountains, of course, is that you well you get to drive, and um, you get to you know go up hills and down hills and round these things that that most Canadians aren't very comfortable with. They're called corners or curves. They don't have them very often in Canada, and they certainly don't have them much in the prairie. It's a pretty straight line from from Lethbridge to Edmonton, to be honest. There's only one or two little curves in there. Um, so the mountains are uh, a pleasure. Uh, a pleasurable driving experience and so uh, the nature of the, the engine braking and uh, handling of the vehicle is very important when you're when you're swinging around these sort of curves especially when you've got as you can just see to the right here you've probably got 150 100 foot drop to the right hand side here and, and that's one of the one of the shallower ones um the engine braking uh, or lack thereof is concerning here because the, the the manner in which I drive of course is to dump a bunch of gears to, to go through the corners. Um, days of the manual I think are long past even though I prefer them and so we have to put up with the, the automatic slushmatic boxes that we've that we've sort of given with Land Rovers now and I'm, I'm not saying there's anything particularly wrong with them but uh, the 8 speed mated to this P400 with the reduced engine braking really does alter your experience of driving in the mountains because you're, you're always driving on the brakes which as I've mentioned before is problematic for, for multiple reasons not the least of which is skidding on ice and and uh, and losing control and ending up in that river on the right hand side um worse of course is that when you tow a trailer you really don't want to be over it's very um uh it's it's almost uh, opposite uh, well it is opposite to the way in which truck drivers drive and I've done two million miles as a truck driver so so coming down mountains like this with trailers attached which I which I did with the trucks and also when I've towed the caravan uh, is is sort of the thing that's done by dumping a bunch of gears and dropping your speed at the top and, and letting it roll down but as you saw earlier on that's not really possible um with the with the defender because it, it won't hold itself back let alone a trailer on the back and that re that forces you to to be using the brakes all the time uh, and uh, of course when when you get to the bottom of the hill the brakes are a lot hotter and a lot more worn than they would have been if the engine braking and the transmission was doing that work for you Nevertheless, um, it's still a pleasurable experience staying through the mountains and the adaptive suspension fitted to the defenders really does make them handle very well. This photograph is taken just outside of the Saskatchewan River crossing again and I took it because when we first came round the corner it looked like there'd been an avalanche but it was in fact um, just cloud. We headed uh, south then in towards uh, towards Bow Lake and a lodge that sits uh, outside of it and this glacier which uh, is right in the centre of the photograph and, and of course the frozen lake surrounding it. When I first landed in Canada my mum and Jerry and I uh, came up here and had a nice cup of coffee at the lodge and fed the biggest crow I think we've ever seen. From there it was on to Canmore and up to the Mount Shark Highway which is not really much of a highway, much more of a gravel road. And then you pretty look at the snow over there, look, on the, what's this, what, Harling Peak, I think this is, isn't it? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, look, here's the goats, sheep, what are these ones? Goats, I think there's goats on there. We're on the goats. Goats, my goats. Oh. Now then, go. <laughs> 
Oh, what are you? Are you something I can lick? my goats and there's another goat there, look. He's making me nervous. Have you seen those fuckers climb the yeah, damn wall? Yeah, still makes me nervous. This vlog's gonna rip his sump out if he... Uh, that was a bad day. This bit of gravel road is actually called the Smith Dorian Trail. Uh, I call it the Mount Shark Highway because it's the road that takes you to the Mount Shark. Um, it, it's uh, the 742 and it sort of takes uh, takes you from Canmore over into Kananaskis country and then from there it can take you south onto the uh, south onto the 22 or it can take you north back onto the, the highway the main highway from Calgary to uh, to Vancouver. Um, oh, the road uh, that it transects, or one of the roads that it sort of runs into, uh, is um, the road that takes you to the 22. But that's closed, and it's and it's often closed much later, even than the the. Um, the Icefields Parkway, uh, and in fact was closed. We had to turn uh, left at the bottom and, and rejoin the highway. Uh, we knew that, of course, because we checked the the, the <laughs> checked earlier on. Um, and I'd actually come up this way because I wanted to go to Mount Shark. Last time I came to Mount Shark, which was probably two months ago, um, it had snowed very heavily, and the trees, much like these here, were, were very pretty and sort of dusted with the snow. Um, but the uh, the road was also uh, iced all over, snow all over, and so this sort of gravel road that you see here uh, wasn't there. It was, it was solid, uh, solid snow, as it were, and solid snow and ice. Um, and uh, I'd attempted to capture some drone footage last time I came up, and we'd had some fairly major drama with the drone. It wasn't, it was, just wasn't playing at all and um, we got very frustrated having come all the way up here uh, specifically to take that uh, it's a fair drag specifically to take the drone footage to be frank you know I never do very well with the drone footage I sort of just take lots of footage and, and try and edit it to make a decent picture out of lots of <laughs> bad photographs but uh, I did better this time than we did at least last time we got some footage rather than none Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll move now to uh, to Mount Shark because uh, uh, the footage there is a bit more of the Land Rover and a bit less of me, which is better all round. And with that, it's good night from me and it's good night from Finn. See you next time.